This is the FE tutorial number five. Uh, we're going to talk about enforced displacement, and this will lead to the stiffness calculations as well too. So I will start with the sketch you see from the page number six dash two. Once it's done, we can auto sketch, and I will make a simple path, and I will have one inches on the side. Alright, so let's say this is six clamp. So what we're gonna do is using this hole, we're gonna clamp this uh, six clamp in a position, and we're gonna apply the distributive force here. So the edge we pull down, it will lead to the uh, displacement, and we're gonna find out uh, how much load is actually needed with the known amount of displacement. To do that, we're gonna start with the material. Let's just use a uh, default aluminum material. So of course, once you apply the material, make sure you go to the properties and analysis. Have all these right numbers for the, your actual material you are using for the, your party design. All right, once it is ready, we can jump into the GSA tool. I already made a shortcut if you haven't. Go to analysis and do the GSA. All right, of course, we're doing the static analysis. Okay. All right, so for this case, let's confirm the size of a knot first, either double click in the tetrahedral symbol here or here. We get the size. So in this case, I will start with 0.25 inches. And 10% of the mesh size is my uh, absolute sigma amount when you to apply it. Uh, and because of a lot of curvature going on around here, which it will feel the lots of stress, I'm going to use a parabolic meshes. And we can always visualize it <clears throat> and confirm how the mesh is built in. So it looks good. So before you load, uh, apply the load and the restraint, make sure deactivator matches because the actual load and restraint is applied to the actual material. Properties and the material should be already updated based on the part you already made it. And in steady case, we need the proper restraint and the load. For the restraint, uh, let's say somehow we using the key or pins, we are able to hold this clamp using this hole. So I'm going to just use the clamp and using the whole surface. So make sure when you kind of look at it, it shows all four. And the clamp symbol shows up, indicating the base being picked for to apply the clamp. All right. Then now the the load I'm going to apply is a different one. In this time, we're going to use this one, the enforced the displacement. But before using enforced the displacement, you have to define the traction of the load you're going to enforce it to hold up. So to do that, we are going to use this one, user defined the restraint. So this will be used to indicating the traction of a reinforcement we're going to apply later on. So click the edges in this time. At the face, we're going to use the edge. There we go. And this time, the direction is we're pulling down. So we're going to use Z direction. So that indicates the, how we're going to hold up and find out the displacement. Say OK. Then finally, we'll be able to use this one, enforce the displacement. And what is asking is the user defined the restraint, the restraint indicating the direction of displacement. So if you go to the uh, restraint, you can see the first user defined the restraint we already made it, which will be the direction we're pulling down. So click that one as a restraint. Then using the information, you will ask, oh, okay, so I see. Uh, it is we pulled it down to the Z direction, then how much do you want? So in this case, 
I would say with negative z direction, minus 0 0.01 inches will be pulled down. Let's say that. Okay. Then it will be really exactly 0 0.01 inches in the z direction. It will be pulled down. Then we'll be able to later find out how much energy will be required to do it. Using that information, we'll be able to calculate this difference, which is amount of load divided by amount of displacement, which is known as 0 0.01 with restricted. So let's compute first. Let's go over them. Yes. And now, if you visualize the amount of displacement, and made it so better. And look, if you look at from the front, you can see it. What's going on? Right? As you pull it down, <clears throat> it's pushing down. And the amount of it will be the 0 0.01 inches. You can see the stress distribution. You can see where the high stress is building. Obviously, right here inside of the C. And also, the amount of displacement because because we're pulling down here there's almost zero or lots of displacement happening right here that's good then our interest was not actually find out of course that the stress amounts is important to find out this clamp is really working or not but our major goal was actually calculating amount of uh, stiffness of this part it, uh, we have it so to do that, how about this? So let me turn on all three, just like we did practice. Of course, this is not single solution. You have to perform the mesh optimization. You have to decrease the meshes smaller by smaller and smaller and smaller, and to see whether your calculation value is converged or getting close to a single number. All right. With that assumption, you done all of them but now our main interest to calculate the stiffness of our uh, part we are going to uh, go to the sensor then it's already showing how much energy is required but we're gonna go to sensor and creating new one so right click over the sensor creating the result sensor and there is a reaction sensor so again under the sensor right click Created visual sensor and reaction sensor. Okay, right away, then you will bring a reaction sensor. Then what you need to do is comp uh, find the actually it takes the load. So since we are holding here and pulling down here, what is it really holding uh, holding this part not to fly away? Whereas it taking all burden of those load is actually the uh, the clamp we have it. So the entity, the reaction sensor will be applied into where it's been hold, which is the clamp. We have it. Click. Then once it's done, press update wizard. Then it will give you, it will give you the uh, actual amount of load this the clamp was as taking as you push down 0 0.01 inches of displacement. It's showing that zero in abstractions, obviously, and the y, the very little amount because of that slightly differences as you pull it down, right? The, the, this phase is not really following, actually, it's leaning down, which is all right, but that little amount, so as you can see, it's almost zero, so exponential of 10, so nothing. Then now you're seeing the pound force here, so in this direction, the major measure amount of this the load required to make this part displaced 0 0.01 inches is 89.7738 pound force so using this information the kinematic uh, and i'm sorry the uh, stiffness of this part can be easily calculated stiffness definition is the um, amount of load required divided by actual amount of displacement. But we already discrete the amount of size of displacement as 0 0.01. So all we gotta do is divide this number with 
the displacement we already got. Right. So if we 89.773 divided by 0 0.01, it will be close to 80, um, 900, right? 8,970 something pound force per inches of stiffness you will get it. So that's, that's how you're using the enforced displacement. Again, uh, uh, it's a reverse work of what we've been done. Instead of applying uh, a known amount of load and to find out the displacement, find out uh, stress, this case you can use with a known amount of a displacement, then you can find out how much load is actually required to do it. By using those information, so you can go further to find out stiffness of the material you're working. All right, that concludes chapter six.